Hey, this is Joe from Personas. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily set up a loop in Studio One. I'll admit, I have selfish motivations for this video. I've got some songs that I need to write, got a bunch of ideas, uh, and I need to just get into Studio One and flesh a few different sections out and kind of piece a song together. Studio One is great for that, but I don't have a drum kit. I can't play drums, uh, and I'm not gonna bring my drummer in yet because I just wanna figure out the songs. So I need some sort of a drum loop. Now, I could go get some drum recording software. They usually have their own MIDI loops in them, and that's a great option. However, if you wanna use just what comes with Studio One, then I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's really easy. And we're just gonna create a simple drum pattern to give us something that we can record and sing along to, to flesh out the song. All right, here's Studio One. Here is a song that I created. It's just blank. Yay for blankness. I'm gonna press F6, and that's gonna bring up the instrument panel over here on the right-hand side. So this is our browser. This is how you access things like instruments, effects, plugins, loops, files. There's a lot of stuff. If you're looking for it, it shows up over here. Uh, there's a couple of keyboard shortcuts. F6 will open and close that browser showing you the instruments. Now what we need to focus on here, you need to look under, if it looks like this for you, look under maybe sampler, if they're sorted by vendor, then you would look under Personas. You're looking for impact. It might be under drums, depending on how you organize it. Impact is what we're looking for. And when you click on it, or you do this little drop down here, you may or may not see a big list of drum kit sounds. If you don't see anything here, never fear, there's a way to get those. Head up to uh, the menu and find the one that says Studio One Installation. For PC users, that menu is somewhere over here. For Mac users, it's right here. Studio One Installation. I click on that and I come over here to Instruments and then I look at Impact Drum Kits and this one, Impact XT Kits and Sounds. This is included with Studio One. I just check that box and click Install. It'll download and they'll show up right there. I already have these installed, so I don't have to do that. So Impact is our drum machine. You can see it here looking at the, the little image here. That's what it looks like. It's like uh, similar to our, my, my Adam is way over there, uh, a drum pad drum machine, right? You can play the different parts. We're not gonna actually play it in because my rhythm is terrible, but we're gonna use that to build our drum loop. So I'm gonna come in and look at this list of uh, kits that we have, and I'm gonna pick one that I feel like I remember liking in a recent 30s, 70s, no, let's go with uh, Warehouse Tech. I feel like I liked that one before. Something about a warehouse or a garage. So all I did was drag that template into a blank area here in the arranger, and now I've got impact pulled up, and I can hear the sweet kick. It's pretty cool. You just click on the pads to hear it. All right, that's cool. Maybe I want something a little more straightforward, uh, a little more just regular kit. So let's try Garage Tech. That's the one. Didn't I say Garage a second ago? So this is cool. I've got this list over here. I can go do this pull-down menu and find that preset. Or what's better is I can just drag it onto here. I literally just drag it onto the plugin and let go and it loads it up. So now I should have, yeah. That'll work, that'll work for what I'm doing. So I'm not going for like full on program an entire song. I just wanna make some sounds and maybe just get a simple hi-hat kick snare pattern that I can then record along to. So the way that works now, you may think, okay, now what? Well, come over here, and this is our timeline, right? This is where the music goes, but right now there's nothing there. If I just hover my mouse over like the lower half of a blank area here, so between bars one and two, and I double click, check it out. I get this one bar block, just an empty block that's waiting for something to fill it. And if I right click on this, we can look at convert part to pattern. You see that? So let's do that. Bam. I've converted it to a pattern. And then when I double click on it, we see that we've got this uh, kind of a drum machine pattern sequencer here. Let me do that again because it's really important. So I've got nothing here. I double click to create something. Something from nothing. This is a blank MIDI event is what it is. If I double click on it right now, we get this. And this is kind of a, a MIDI note viewer where we could take a pencil tool 
and we could draw in notes that way. I don't like to work that way. It's not as fun as the pattern mode. So I undo all that. That's why I come in here, I right click on this event and I say, hey, you convert this part to a pattern. So right now it's a part, we're gonna convert it to a pattern. A pattern can repeat itself over and over, which is kind of what you want out of a loop. So now I can come up here, I've got this still selected, I can make this into a simple one bar loop by just clicking and dragging up here on the top of this little bar right here. That's our loop. I turn the loop on by clicking this right here, loop active. And now when I hit play, whoops, let's go back to the beginning, hit play, and it's gonna loop through this one bar. And we can see while this is playing up here, there's nothing to hear yet, this is cycling through these 16 little segments. So it's a 16 step sequencer. So I can say, hmm, I know I probably want the snare on two and four, so I can put that here and here. So we should hear. Already pretty cool. Let's do something on the hi-hat, but this time let's just actually make it really quick and easy. I select the hi-hat. I like that sound, that'll work. Wait, there's a third one. Let's do it with the hi-hat one. And I come up here and I've got a couple of different options that's gonna automatically fill it out for me. So let's do every second step and see how that sounds. And then let's put a kick on one and three. So this is the first beat, one, two, three, four, so it's divided into four. So we're looking at 16th notes here. So here's a whole beat, here's a second beat, and it's color kind of gray and lighter gray to show us the bars. So if we want to kick on one and one and three and the snare on two and four, and the hi-hats every eighth note, we got it. Now, the song that I'm thinking about, let me think about how it goes. That's the tempo I want. This is what I've got right now. So I want to speed things up. How do we do that? Well, if you look just around the window, you'll see in the bottom right hand side is this window that says, this little section that says tempo. Now I can just click on that and enter a new number. So right now the tempo is 79 beats per minute BPM. I could enter in 90, press enter, and then just hit play and see how that tempo feels. It's a little bit slow still. Now we can play that, that game where you just type in numbers until you get it right, or you can tap it in. And the way you tap it in is simply hover your mouse over the word tempo. And if you do this, you'll see a little menu will pop up. Well, there we go. That says tap tempo. So I can literally just tap in the tempo here. So I'm thinking of the part guitar. That's tempo. Click, click. Click, 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 click. So it takes four clicks to register the tempo and it guessed 96 and 99. So it's probably somewhere in there. Let's listen to that. Little, maybe, maybe a little slower. Let's try the 96. I like that a lot. So now the drum kit's a little bit boring. I don't want to write Tim, my drummer's drum part. I want him to come up with it. But I'd like something maybe a little more interesting than this. So maybe we... So maybe like an extra kick there. That wasn't it at all. Maybe if it comes in a little bit early with the snare. Maybe that's a little too weird and we just go back to normal with an extra kick hit here and maybe like a clap on the offbeat or something. I don't know.
the world's simplest drum beat in the world, but now I've got a loop that I can record to. But what's the problem? Well, my song's not going to be one bar long. You may wish it was one bar long, but I want it to be longer. So if I just grab this pattern, we hit F2. F2 makes this window go away. This is our edit window. You can also click down here, browse, edit, mix. They all have their own windows that hide when you don't want to see them. We can just drag this pattern like this. Look at that. And if we keep going, we can just go meow, we can go as long as we want. And now we can just play along to it. So now I could create another track, plug my guitar in, and record something to the And I've got the ability to say, that's cool. Maybe after I start recording, I think, no, I want it to hit two kicks every time. So I want it to be like this. kind of a we will rock you beat or maybe once I start playing I realize that's too busy I just want a four on the floor kick I change it once it changes it for the whole loop and then I want like an open hi-hat on this last one it's too much let's just go back to how we had it so we can easily change that and you can see visually how it's changing it across the entire song so this can now be our loop that we record to. And then, if this is what you like, and this is a cool sound, and you wanna use a variation of this for your next several songwriting sessions, which I do, I can do this. I come up to File, and I choose Save as Template, and I'm gonna say, <laughs> the template's gonna be called Loopy Schmoopy. Uh, anybody get the Schmoopy reference? If you leave a comment, if you get the Schmoopy reference. Um, and I say, okay, now get check this out. I'm gonna get rid of this song, close it forever, go to sleep, wake up, it's tomorrow. Hey, I wanna write a song. I say, new song. And then I say, hmm, what templates do I have under the user tab? Oh, I, I've got one called Loopy Schmoopy because I made something to help me with my loops. And I can call this song, brr, brr, because that's what I was playing before. And I can say, okie dokie. And guess what? It opens up a brand new song with this ready to go. So that one's so it's at 96 tempo. Maybe the tomorrow I wake up and I'm hyper and I'm like, you know what? No, this needs to be at 140. I just change the number and I go. You can do it as much as you want. So it's not like you're locked into writing the same song for the next 12 songwriting sessions. And you can even change the this is a real simple beat, so you could write a lot of songs around this, but as just a good starting point to help you get into the vibe of writing songs a little bit faster, this is a great way to do it. And if you always know you're gonna have one vocal track, one guitar track, you could save those. Let's say I wanna do that. Let's say I want at least at least a vocal mic. Um, but, 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 this is input three. Uh, we'll make it yellow, the color of vocals. Uh, check. Yeah, okay, so that's working. Uh, so I could always have a vocal mic that comes in, record enabled as a part of my template, but you might be thinking, Joe, you already made the template. Dummy, how are you going to add that to it? I'll show you. Dummy, don't call me a dummy. I shouldn't call you a dummy. Don't tell my bosses I called you a dummy. Uh, I come up here to file. I go to save as template, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, you're just going to make a new template. Wrong, because look, there's this cute little link that says replace existing. I click on that and it opens up the folder on my computer where all those templates are saved, and I just gotta find the one that I just made, Loopy Schmoopy. I select it, the one that's called Loopy Schmoopy dot song template, and I just say bam, and bam. And now I have updated that template. I do this all the time. I'll start a template thinking I've made the best template in the history of the world, then I'll remember I forgot to put a vocal track, and then I'll add a vocal track, then I'll resave it, and replace the existing template with the new and improved template, and you can do this over and over. I've done it so much, it's embarrassing how bad my templates are to start, but I fix them in the long run. All right, that's it for this video. If you've not done something like this, go do it. Put this video back at the beginning, open up Studio One, if you have a separate TV screen or monitor, watch the video, pause it, do this with me, and then guess what? You'll have it forever. My gift to you, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.